Well, here I am again. It is November 5th, Sunday, November 5th, um, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm going to continue doing these live streams Sundays at 3 p.m. Unless, of course, I have some commitments or, or travel or something that stops me from giving you guys two hours of my time. During these two hours, I want to make sure that you come ready with questions prepared okay, to ask me any of your audio-related uh, concerns. One thing I want to make sure you understand is when you're asking me for a recommendation of some sort, whatever that may be, please make an effort to tell me what does your system consists of. I cannot make recommendations if I really do not know the supporting gear, the supporting cast, okay? So it is very, very crucial for me um, that you give me that information, okay? If not, I'm going to go right over your question because you're not giving me enough for me to answer you, okay? So make sure you understand that. It is very, very important. So before I get started, I want to get your feedback at this time. Are you guys enjoying these videos throughout the week? Um, if you've seen my live streams, okay, you can catch the whole thing on Sunday, uh, but soon after that, I'm taking it down because I need to edit content uh, for the entire week. So I am putting videos that are approximately 8 to 10 minutes long. Nothing too crazy. Uh, I don't want to keep you guys glued. So I think 8 to 10 minutes is it's the right, right amount of time. Um, and uh, you get to hear answers to all sorts of questions. Do you guys enjoy this type of content? Is this something that seems interesting? It seems like for the most part, a majority of you are liking it based on the feedback that I've gotten in the comments. But this is the first time I'm asking you live if you find any value in these videos. Um, and it's a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. But it definitely is moving my needles when it comes to reaching more audiences, newer subscribers. Um, not to mention, of course, more views, which helps the channel grow. Okay, so let me first start by talking about the new Magical M7. Um, I think you guys saw images of this speaker, okay? Um, it finally came out last Tuesday, I want to say, Tuesday, Wednesday, November 1st. And it is exactly what I said it would be, $375,000 MSRP. Luckily, luckily, they did exactly what I wanted them to do, which is to create a more affordable M9. The speaker does not look like the M6. It looks like the M9, the bigger brother. I think that was a great move. Um, if you're asking me, I think Magical realizes that, unfortunately, you're not going to get a lot of buyers for speakers that are you know, as pricey as the M9. That's just not reality, folks. You're not going to get that many buyers. Um, but I don't think they're trying to sell many anyway. Rumor has it, rumor has it, that there are approximately 20 magical M9s around the globe. The majority of these M9s are in Asia, okay? So we don't have that many here in the U.S. I would say that I'd be shocked if I found out that there are five magical M9 owners in the United States. A lot of that ultra-expensive stuff doesn't even stay here in the U.S. Um, I know most of you watch me from around the globe. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that when you see these brands, American brands, come out with crazy expensive cables, speakers, uh, amplifiers, I'm going to tell you that most of this stuff doesn't come to the U.S. Most of this stuff does not stay in the U.S., I should say. It goes overseas. It goes to the Asian buyers. They are the big ones pushing the envelope when it comes to the extremes. When it comes to the most expensive items, I think the Asian buyers are number one. Uh, in the United States, believe it or not, we do have uh, a specific kind of audiophile that loves ultra expensive stuff. But the truth is, if I'm being sincere, in the U.S., most folks rather spend their money on either, if it's a toy, if it's something for a hobby, I think people here in the U.S. spend more money on uh, cars, number one, more than anything else. You'll see more expensive cars than anything else here. Um, and I see a lot of people who are into watches, believe it or not, expensive watches here in the U.S. But the ultra high-end audio, the truth is most of this stuff 
we never get to see in the U.S., okay? I've never seen an M9 other than the one time I went to the Magical Factory. So I wanted to give you those, um, I wanted to give you that context so that you understand that a lot of this expensive stuff isn't really sold uh, here in the uh, U.S., okay? So kudos to Magical for releasing the M7. It looks like it might be a great speaker, um, hopefully I get to hear it at a show. I did ask Alon Wolf if he is planning to display the speaker at a show sometime in the near future, hopefully in 2024. And he said anything is possible. I'm not going to hold my breath. If I'm a betting man, I'm going to say if I'm a betting man, I would be shocked if we see a magical M7 at a show. Reason being is here in the United States, we have never even seen a Wilson Audio Chronosonic XVX. You've seen it in at Munich. Munich, yes. You have never seen a Chronosonic XVX at any U.S. show. So I think that more than likely, you're not going to see a Magical M7 at a U.S. show. Okay, I am pretty sure we're going to see it in Munich next year. Not going to see it at a you know local show. It's just because of the fact that. Um, I think the biggest thing that biggest concern that Magical has, just like Wilson, is the reality is this type of speaker will never be set up properly in a hotel room with poor acoustics, uh, a poor environment. And all that's going to do is create a narrative that destroys the speaker brand, destroys the product itself instead of actually helping the product gain traction. Okay. So I don't think we'll ever get to see this level of loudspeakers at a US show. It just doesn't sell. It doesn't real buyers of this type of speaker do not go to a show to hear it. Real buyers of top end loudspeakers get out to dealers that have done all the work, all the heavy lifting to make sure that that speaker sounds its best. Okay, so that's what a real buyer would do or fly to the factory, the, whether it be the Wilson, the Focal, the Rockport factory, or the Magical factory, whatever it would be. Real buyers head out to the factory to hear it or they go to a to a dealer that has it properly set up. Okay, that's what they do. They don't go to shows to listen to this. Okay, before I forget, I want to say this. I will be at the Capital Audio Fest show in Rockville, Maryland this coming Friday, Saturday. I will be there. You will see me there walking the hallways, um, looking at all the possibilities, as many rooms as I po as I can possibly handle. Um, I am typically there from 9 in the morning, hit the ground running, all the way through 6 p.m. on Friday. And I repeat that same schedule on Saturday. If you are there and you see me, feel free to come by and say hello. Let's talk audio. Let's talk about your situation. Uh, get, uh, I love to engage with a lot of you, and you know, in person, it means a lot to me, of course, because it means that you're watching me, you're supporting me. So, if you are in Rockville, Maryland, this coming weekend, come and say hello.